Good morning. We're going to see how this works. Da, da, da. I think we're live. And hopefully Jen will get my invite. Jill's watching. Good morning, Jill. Um, this is a totally new experiment. So we are seeing how it goes. You always have coffee. Um, so I just don't know how to tell if Jen got my invite. Oh, there we go. Jen is watching. Bring her on camera. This works. Hi, Leanne. Hi, Scott. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 All right. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do you hear like an echo? How do we get rid of the echo? Sounds like we're in a fish tank. Hmm. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> um, do you want to maybe try disconnecting and I'll re add you? Okay. Yeah. An alien in a fish tank. Yes. See, uh, this is fun experiment. So we'll we'll try and give it a go again and see if re-adding them fixes it. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so we're, we're trying this for the very first time right now. Uh, we've never done it before. And so that's a little fun to try and experiment on the fly. Um, okay. And they're back. Let's see how, okay. There we go. Good morning, Allison. Okay. Is it better? It sounds better. Yeah, I think it's working. Okay, because yeah. I, I closed the app totally and just started over. Okay. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Zach, I'm John. I don't think we've actually met before. Right? Yeah, uh, Jen was telling me, I think you guys met um, over uh, last Christmas when I, I was in Denver at our winter conference, and so I was out of town, but she was... She spoke at church for a few minutes. Yeah, she was there in tow with the kids. And that was fun. I feel like that was so long ago. I actually didn't realize he hadn't met you. And then he's like, no, I'm pretty sure I haven't met him. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, young guy in California. He's like, no. Yep. Nope. So it, it does feel like forever ago because it's a crazy world. 
Oh, I know. I know. And we were hoping to come over during the summer break, but I feel like we're just kind of waiting to see how stuff continues to unfold with COVID before we kind of go anywhere or do anything outside of Pullman. So right. it's definitely changed our plans a lot in some ways. You know, my wife's saying it's all, it, the audio is all my problem. Oh. So, but we'll, we'll just we'll just press on and, and make everyone feel better. Because the point is for you guys to talk and them to hear less about me. So, uh, well, I would love for you guys to, for those that don't know, Zach and uh, Jen are crew missionaries um, at WSU Washington State University. That, Valley View support. Do you guys hear the terrible echo when I talk? No, okay. it sounds pretty good to us. Okay, great. Um, so maybe you guys, I mean, I would love for you to share uh, about yourself, your ministry, and how you got connected to Valley View. Because, you know, there's new people that might not know who you guys are, and just give them a chance to get to know you guys and then hear about. Um, how ministry is going in uh, at Wazoo uh, in COVID-19 and what it looks like to do ministry in a totally really different environment. Yeah, well, I'm sure you're feeling some of that as you're doing these now on Tuesdays. <laughs> uh, well, I can start with the history of Valley View. So I grew up in Kent, and but in an, like we would go to a Lutheran church on holidays and stuff, but I always knew, I didn't know the name of the church, Valley View, but you guys were the church that had the crazy things on your reader board. Like, in <laughs> like, I just remember being like, oh yeah, like, people just knew. They'd be like, oh, did you see the funny thing on that crazy church's reader board today? So, it just was like a thing. I knew that there was a church where your guys' churches and stuff, but it actually wasn't until I think I was in college. Oh my like, gosh. Uh, like I was in college where I had just joined staff and was in support living at home. But I went into Cutter's Point when the Allens were, or not the Allens, when Allen uh, and Cindy were running it, uh, which now I think is a nail salon or something um, in Covington. And Allen, Allen, grabbed me up and I ordered a coffee. So, he just, you know, doing his EV thing, just started talking to me and my mom and asking about our story, found out I was a believer, and then invited me to church. And I started attending Valley View because I didn't really have a home church in Kent. Um, I came to faith right before my senior year of high school and then really grew my faith in college away from home. So I started coming, and then you guys became like a family, and that women's Bible study in the morning was like my little group, so... Awesome. Did you want to talk? What were your other questions? Sorry, you had so many at once. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if you guys want to share a little bit about yourselves um, and just kind of an overview of your ministry with the crew, and then, um, then we can just, you know, talk about, um, sorry, the echo is very distracting. Um, so it's like I hear things like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just like, what's it like to do ministry for you? Like, so what's your normal ministry? And then what's it look like to shift to change ministry now? Or maybe or what? Where are you seeing the Lord of God encouraging stories? Um, wherever we go. It ended. Yeah. Um, well, I guess Jen just shared a little bit about herself, so I can share a bit about myself. Um, I, I was born and raised in Hawaii um, and uh, came to, to Washington State for, um, for college. Um, and uh, like Jen mentioned when she was sharing, we both grew a ton in our faith um, by being involved in crew as, as students. Um, that's where like, I was raised in a Christian home, but that's where I really understood what it meant to surrender your life to the Lord and walk as a, as a believer and grow in your faith. Um, and definitely how to share my faith, um, was, uh, was all through crew in college. Um, and then I guess briefly for us, uh, like we, <laughs> we dated in college, went through a, a big messy breakup, um, shortly after we graduated, neither of us saw ourselves joining staff with crew 
um, when we were graduating from college. Um, Jen became a teacher. Um, I played baseball in college, so playing professional baseball was the dream and got to do that for a few years. Um, but it wasn't for both of us about three years after we graduated um, and we we're broken up at this time. Um, I, uh, when my baseball career ended, I felt the Lord calling me to join staff with crew. Um, so I, I pursued that. And then about six months later, um, Jen felt called as well. And so I ended up back at WSU as my first placement um, when I joined staff with crew. And then Jen ended up at UCLA. Um, and then we, yeah, I guess fast forward a bunch. We got married uh, about like four years into our staff career. I thought Three. you were say four years ago. I was going to be like, what do you mean? It was six. <laughs> um, we spent a few years at UCLA. Um, and then now we're back. This, we just finished our third year back at, at Washington State. Um, and so, yeah, it's been quite a, quite a journey. Um, and I mean, that's one of those things as, as a believer, right? You just, you, know, you don't know exactly where God's always going to lead you. Um, you know, he can start you off on one path and then kind of start nudging you in a different direction and, um, everything he does, right. Prepares you for, for what he has in store for you next. So that's kind of where, yeah, where we're at. Um, and I guess to, to get into, or well, you gonna... just, so I typically work, I just kind of work with initial context is what we call it, which is anybody and everybody. Um, largely the dorms is where I do stuff. Um, and so Typically before COVID, it looked like discipling girls on campus and leading. Um, we have a weekly Bible study that's for everybody. And I had uh, three student leaders that I would train and we'd write the study together and then we'd lead it together on Monday nights and doing, going sharing on campus, having outreach events on campus, you know, like just being on campus. And then Zach has always focused uh, primarily, but not ex exclusively with um, athletes. And then he's been working with, do you call ROTC cadets? Like yeah. Valor is what the Valor is called. Valor is a and so ROTC cadets. And here at Washington State, we have um, uh, all three branches. Yeah, Navy, Air Force, and um, Army all here at, at WSU. So. You just offended all the Marines. Well, so we don't. We don't. <laughs> U, of, U of I, University of Idaho, which we uh, we partner with that campus for Valor. They have an actual Marine um, we detachment. We have all the branches. Well, Marines <laughs> are <laughs> part of the Navy, and I know they get mad when people say that. <laughs> then you have Space Force. <laughs> Interestingly, we just had a cadet involved with. Uh, Valor, uh, who graduated this year, who is going into the Space Force um, oh, yeah. from, from the Air Force ROTC program here. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, just... Hey, we're learning. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, kind of like Jen was saying, our, uh, so much of what we do is usually, you know, very, very hands-on. Uh, like life on life, life as much life, as we can. Ministry seeing where they live, who their friends are. Like, he even gets to work out in, it's called Bowler, which is where all the athletic gym, like, he gets to work out with the student athletes and coaches and then network at the snack station and just all this stuff. But, and it's just like a natural way for him to be a presence there, to know people. And it's just like a lot of those things, obviously, aren't. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of that, obviously, when COVID, um, really started hitting hard and campuses were getting shut down a lot of that face-to-face hands-on ministry um changed um so couldn't spend time on campus couldn't um couldn't even you know crew um wanted to be very um active i guess you know yeah proactive in, in the policies and so they they wanted to keep us safe as as their staff members as well and so basically for the for the most part you know their policies were you know do what your what your state what your what your county is is telling you to do and so um a lot of that one-on-one -on -one or just hands-on um in person in person ministry <laughs> uh yeah stopped but it was really encouraging just <laughs> the technology that we have today. I mean, even like what we're doing right now, you know, being able to communicate like this and um, using things, you know, other platforms like Zoom, um, connecting with students that way, uh, really like enabled us to do a lot of the same things that we were doing, a lot of the discipleship, especially 
um, outreach, you know, uh, evangelism looked a lot different because we can meet up with people on campus and, and talk about the gospel. So a lot of that was um, looked different, but a lot of the discipleship stuff actually looked somewhat similar, just, you know, doing it through a platform like this with our students. So um, things definitely changed. It, it was, it was definitely challenging and, and more difficult. And even for me, like I'm naturally an introvert. So I was, you know, at first I was like, oh, this isn't going to be too bad, you know, having to do everything online. But it was like, I was surprised at how challenging it was to actually do discipleship, you know, without actually being able to meet, you know, in person um, and have that connection. Um, it's great that we have this technology, but, you know, I, everyone can attest, you know, it's still different, you know, connecting this way. Yeah. And it, yeah, so most of our like set events, like our Bible studies, group meetings, we just transitioned to online. Um, but it's actually been really kind of a neat thing of being able to take a step back and be like, what are the things that we do? And like, how can we do them different? Or like, I just feel like we've been given this like freedom that maybe we haven't fully felt before to be like, okay, we're about evangelism and discipleship, fulfilling the Great Commission, empowering students to go out into their communities, their work, whatever. So those things haven't changed, but it doesn't mean we have to have a weekly meeting or it doesn't mean that we have to like, you know what I mean? And so I just feel like we've had space to kind of dream and to think like, okay, like we have only Gen Z in college now. Gen Z is way different than millennials. And, you know, so just like, what are some unique things? Like, how can we be creative? How can we try new things that we've never done before? Which again, we'll pivot once school hopefully starts in the fall, but it's been, and a learning curve because I'm probably the most on social media between our staff team and I am not a Gen Z or like, I don't use it the same way they do. So we've tried different things for outreaches online and they just, if I'm being honest, they just haven't worked. <laughs> But we're like, well, we're still trying to be faithful and, like, engage. Um, but for the most part, at least evangelism has really looked like helping our students care for those that they're connected to. So, like, mm -hmm. athletes, like, have you called? Have you texted? Have you checked in with your teammates? Like, how are they doing? How can you walk alongside them emotionally? How does this open up spiritual conversations? And honestly, there's been – it's been really neat. A couple of our freshmen and, like, one in particular um, – has been become really burdened living at home again. Uh, her dad doesn't know the Lord and he's pretty against spiritual things and same with her brother and her just being like burdened, like to be praying for them, to engage them intentionally without pushing them away. And so it's just been kind of neat to even see them not just look out there, but also at home of how um, they can use this season uniquely or even meet the needs of neighbors, especially if they have elderly neighbors, and just really be serving their community in ways that they've never done before, and us included. I feel like we've actually connected with our neighbors more. I mean, how long has it been? It feels like six months, but it's only been like three. Uh, way more than we have the year and a half previous to this because they're stuck. <laughs> they want to hang out with us more. So I don't know. It's been different as I'm guessing it's similar for you in your role at Valley View but it's been good at the same time I feel like overall yeah kind of like what Jen was saying you know uh you get you can get kind of like stuck in what you normally do in ministry right like this is we're crew at WSU so this is what we do these are the events we put on or this is how we do outreach on campus and I feel like what what's happened with COVID has really allowed us to think outside the box and try new things. And um, like she was saying, you know, we have a, this new generation, Gen Z, who, um, who thinks and, you know, is open to different things than millennials. And so it's, it's, yeah, just giving us a great opportunity to really, um, yeah, dream, I guess, you know, uh, and, and not be afraid. Not, not that we were, but you can just in the things that you do, the things that you know can um, can, work. can work. You've seen success with them in the past. Um, but with the new, with the new generation, um, being on college campuses these days, we, we are seeing that a lot of our, I guess, older like strategies or techniques for sharing the gospel for, um, leading Bible studies, um, how we connect with students is not, you know, it isn't quite as effective as it used to be. And so it really allowed us the opportunity to, yeah, come up with new, 
new strategies and reevaluate um, uh, how to fulfill our calling. The, the calling is the same, right? Reach the campus with the gospel, um, raise, you know, raise up disciples. Um, but uh, how we go about doing that is, is um, yeah, really looking differently these days. So that's so, gonna be cool. so what does it look like to reach Gen Z? Like we have a bunch of people here listening. Um, like what are you doing? Your experience is trying to reach a different generation that is different than millennials, is different than uh, Gen X, baby boomers. Well, one... It's a great question. We're big, trying to figure it out. We're but... figuring it out. We, um, toward, towards the end of this, um, or I guess I'm we started, yeah, I can get it. Um, in, starting in the second semester, we started reading a, a book as a staff team here called... That we would highly recommend to those that desire to, it's written to like parents, teachers, coaches, like those that are investing in Gen Z. Yeah, so I don't know if that's showing backwards on your screen. Oh, Generation it Z. It is for me. I don't so know about everyone else. It's called Generation Z Unfiltered by Tim Elmore. And he, Tim is a believer, but it's not, it's not like a Christian book, if that makes sense. He, it, uh, it's written for everyone. Um, but a lot, a lot of the principles that he writes about, like you can tell, come from a... Uh, more biblical yeah biblical background yeah, christian mindset, background yeah. um but it's definitely written for everyone and uh it's yeah it, it's really opened our eyes to just how this new younger generation how they think how they act what they're open to hearing um and uh how, it's really opened our eyes like how how best to to reach them um and even like for us uh a lot of how we like traditionally share our faith on campus, um, if you're familiar with, with crew at all, you know, we use um, the Knowing God Personally booklet, like a little um, pamphlet four. with four points, you know, um, starting with that God loves you. And through reading that book, I think we've realized like that isn't necessarily like even even though like completely like believe, right, the gospel is powerful. That's all you need to share with someone in order for them to come to know the Lord. They're, you know, sharing it in this way isn't necessarily the most, uh, the, the best way that they're open to, to hearing the gospel, the most receptive to. And so doing things much more like visually, not, you know, not just in a little booklet, but like doing it, you know, sharing, sharing the gospel in a way that is much more interactive visually, uh, we found is, is more um, effective at reaching them. And even, even sharing the exact same thing, but on our phones, so we have digital copies um, or, or uh, we have an app on, that's available to everyone. It's called God Tools on, on um, whatever you know, app store you have on your phone. But even simply doing that, shifting to sharing it through an app on your phone is far more receptive than pulling out like a little paper copy and <laughs> flipping through this like little booklet with them. Paper is creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't say that, but. Um, or uh, basically doing everything, doing as much as we can digitally is really um, much more, uh, yeah, receptive. Uh, <clears throat> so that, yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing that I feel like we've been learning over this past year. Um, but even, even starting with the point, I, I, we talked about this as a staff team, like the first point that we always share with, with students is that, you know, God loves you. And we found even starting with that point might not necessarily be the thing that they need to hear most in order to be open to hearing the gospel. And so trying to figure out what, how can we introduce the gospel in a, in a way that is more attractive to them, you know, than... Or just actually hits the felt needs yeah. that they're experiencing. So it talks a lot about why there's such an anxiety epidemic and just... Um, I don't know. Honestly, the book is... There's so much information. It was almost a little overwhelming. But, yeah, just... Because our staff team, all four of us, were deeply impacted in college through crew. And um, three of us not coming from like Christian homes, like there's this element of just like, we think 
very similar in some ways, which is not helpful in trying to think outside the box. And so, yeah, it's just been helpful in terms of, yeah, like reorienting, like there's more of an honor shame culture now than like a like judge just, what is the opposite? Like, it doesn't yeah, matter, yeah. but the KGP is not traditionally written in that way. And so it's just been interesting. And then even just thinking through discipleship, like, the things that this generation really struggle with that, that need to be our starting points are different than they were like when we were students and being willing to be open-handed and even just like helping them to have unity of like identity. It talked a lot about how they have different identities based on the different social platforms they're on. So they could come off one way on Instagram, a different way on their Finstas, which is a fake Instagram, a different way on Snapchat, a different way on TikTok. And that they're like, they're stressed out because they're, all over and just even like what are ways that their identity in Christ can actually be their foundation that they've never understood before so just like things like that we've never talked about we've never entertained we've never evaluated because we haven't known we needed to but I don't know in some ways it's so exhausting because you're like I'm just not like this at all <laughs> like I just don't get it but um but it's been good so I would rec we would recommend that book to anyone that um because it also gives at the end of each chapter, like questions, like how can you do this to help them grow on this? Or it does give you tangible things depending on what your students or whatever are working with. But sorry, we talk a lot. <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> they, yeah, they like have a terrible echo. echo. When, I, when they hear me talking right now, they said there's a terrible echo. It's important to hear you guys. So. Yeah, that's funny because we don't, we don't hear the echo from you at all. Um, but, uh, but yeah, like Jen was saying, I, I feel like one of the big things that we learned from that book was that identity piece and their identities are so um, fluid. split and fluid depending on what group of friends they might be communicating with, um, who they're around, uh, what social, um, social media they're currently, you know, using that in that 10 min minute period of their life. And so that, I feel like that was uh, a big piece of like actually having a secure identity in Christ is like a, one of the, I think one of the key ways that we can start like really hitting it in that, um, hitting on that point to show them that they, they can have a secure identity in something and that they don't have to try to put up a front, you know, to be accepted by all these different people around them and that there are a group of people who accept them for who they are and a, and a God who accepts them you know, for who they are. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I think one of the, one of the things you asked were like some of the other, I guess, positive things that have come out from this. Um, I think one of the really encouraging things for us is we have three students um, taking part in our summer of theology um, summer mission. So crew has summer missions, right? That, uh, traditional summer missions um, that they put on every summer that were all canceled because of COVID. And so in the last minute pivot to try to, you know, have something um, give students an opportunity to, to continue growing in their faith over the summer. Um, they, they come out with a lot of digital summer missions, I guess you, you could call them. Um, and so I'm, I'm one of the, one of the coaches for the summer of theology and a, um we have three students that are taking part in that, which, um, well, that we know of for sure. Cause we haven't asked everybody, but we know. Yeah. Um, but that was just really encouraging for us. Um, because we did, we, we had a couple students signed up to go on one of our traditional summer mission trips. A lot of them weren't, um, weren't, uh, able to, to do that, to give up. What was it like eight to 10 weeks of their summers to, to go on one of these summer mission trips. But because of this, because of doing it digitally, we were able to have, you know, a few more students actually do that. Um, and that in itself is encouraging that they were able to do this um, summer of theology thing. But it was also extra encouraging because one of the things that we've noticed on campus is just students not, I guess, having a high view of scripture um, or, or at least in spending time in the word. Um, and so super encouraging that, you know, these students were wanting to act, you know, spend time in the word and grow in their, their theology and know what they actually, you know, believe, uh, and, 
it's been as a coach it's been really fun for me like taking a group of students through um through it's only been two weeks so far we're in our third week but it's been really fun to see i think i think the last number we had was like close to 400 students from across the country signed up to do the summer of theology thing and so for me again that was just really encouraging to see that students are um, wanting to to grow in this and are are starting to grow in you know taking taking theology seriously knowing what the bible teaches knowing why we as believers believe what we believe you know we have these core doctrines or you know statements of faith and so it's like why do we believe you know these things that we, we write on these um doctrinal statements of faith and really digging into the word to see um the evidence that supports you know, what we believe as christians and so that that's just a small thing that um we've taken away from this um that's it, it it's provided the space, I think, for students to, to realize, you know, like, oh, I have, I have time now. You know, I'm not as busy on campus in class. Um, I can actually, yeah, use my time to get into the word and dive into that a little deeper. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you have other questions that you want to ask. No, I, I think that's, that's great. Um, I think we kind of, I didn't have like a specific agenda, I just thought, you know, let's let the Valley View people hear from you and uh, get to know some of their missionaries they support. So. Uh, and I, I will just add one more thing. Uh, again, because of COVID um, and switching to everything digitally towards um, when it, when it hit, like we, we started uh sensing the need for community obviously within our our group um and so to to help have community to help yeah just continue to encourage encourage each other we did we started like a uh, a weekly devotional like what you're doing on facebook live like we we would do that through zoom um and invited all our students um to to be a part of that and it was really encouraging to see how many students actually did take part in our weekly devotionals um, or sorry, uh, daily devotionals. They're Monday through Thursday. Um, how many students were actually a part of that during the school year? But we're continuing that over the summer. And there's been um, a good number of students that have continued doing it over the summer. So again, that kind of just builds off what I was sharing about students starting to show more, um, uh, more of a, yeah, an understanding of the need to be in the word uh, and need to, to grow in there. And their understanding of uh, of scripture, Let's say hi. and so that's been that's been really encouraging for us as a movement that students are um, still taking part of these daily devotionals, um, meeting you know meeting daily, encouraging each other, spending time in the Word, and talking about what you know what God's doing in their lives. Um, I I think in in a lot of ways, and it might sound weird, but I think our community might actually be stronger coming out of this this covid stuff than than how it was going into it that's awesome okay so who is this you got it this one is duke he i don't know how many months year and a half he'll be two in august are you you done can you say bye bye say bye bye <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't talk much <laughs> bye is one of his few words huh and then Caleb is watching the show still. This one gets bored and comes to say hi. The other one doesn't. Oh, bye. <laughs> so is, is it actually giving you an opportunity to continue in the relationship over summer that you wouldn't have had before? Yeah, actually, it has because of what our summers normally look like, you know, going, um, traveling for, you know, 10 weeks at a time. Um, if not more to summer missions or other conferences that we have, we, um, it, yeah, we don't have, we normally don't have a lot of time to connect with our, the students that we normally work with throughout the year. Um, but because of, uh, our new summer formats that we have this year, it has enabled us to, um, spend, yeah, a lot more time. It's still not like a weekly kind of thing. Um, but almost at least every other week. Um, uh, for, yeah, I think for both of us getting to spend time with the normal students uh, that we disciple throughout the school year and just um, keeping up with them, 
um, getting in the word with them, um, seeing how they're doing, um, and yeah, just continuing to encourage them. It really has provided an opportunity for us to, to be more intentional with them, um, which during the summers is difficult to do because of how much we, we travel and other things we have going on. I will say, so athletics supposedly is going to start practicing July 1st, assuming nothing changes. The universe is a phase behind the county, and I think we just applied for phase, I don't know. But one of my girls is on the track team, and one of his guys is on the baseball team. We're in town living with people from their teams. Oh, here's Caleb. <laughs> you want to say, say hi? hi. Mama. Say hi. No? Oh, we're going to be shy. Okay. You want some strawberries? Okay. Um... <laughs> But uh, we just got to a phase where we can now have groups of 10. And so we just started talking about, like, the students that we have here starting to have, like, weekly barbecues to start meeting the other people that are on their team to just connect relationally. Um, so we're really excited just about having space to do some of that stuff, um, even though it's going to look different than we had hoped for the summer, but that we now have the opportunity to start doing that stuff, which has been fun to think about and start to dream about as well. So... Because students love free food. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a student. I love free food. So. True, I guess I do as well. <laughs> well, thanks for your time, guys. Is there, uh, is there anything we can be praying for you guys for? Any, any like, encouragement you want to give to the Valley Group people? Um, I think, like, prayer requests for us would just be um, – I guess the continued guidance on how we can best do ministry next year. We're still, things are still uncertain. Schools don't know exactly what the fall semester is going to look like. So it's difficult for us to plan for, you know, events and, and what our fall is going to look like. Um, so just prayer about that. Um, yeah. Pray that the schools will figure out what it'll look like. Um, pray for us for guidance, for putting together a, um, our fall plan to, to go after the campus. Um, and then obviously, yeah, just, you know, healing for our, our country, uh, for the world really. Um, but personally, like we've, um, we've, we've been healthy. We've been like fine throughout the whole COVID, um, scenario. And so, um, we're, uh, we're doing well that way, but, um, and it can just continued uh, guidance from the Lord to yeah, how we can best reach this next generation, Generation Z, um, how we can impl implement some of these things that we learned, especially from reading that book um, about, yeah, uh, what, what they're open to, what's the best way to reach them and make the gospel, you know, come alive uh, for them would be our biggest prayer requests, I think. Anything yeah. to add? No, I mean, I feel like I say it every time I see you guys, I just feel like this is such a special body of believers that are actually passionate about their faith and they're involved in their community and meaning Ken, I guess. But um, yeah, we just love you guys. And we just, I feel so blessed of randomly met Alan that one time at a coffee shop and knowing that I feel like some of you guys have just become like family to us. Um, and I... Only wish we knew more of you guys better, um, but we're just so thankful for you guys. And even just your desire to know us is not common. I mean, you may know that, but it's just not common. Like, we have people on our support team that we haven't talked to since they joined our team, and they have zero desire to know us better, which is fine. But um, <laughs> it's just special. So um, we just appreciate you guys and even just the eight people that watch this thing at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday um yeah and we hope to assuming nothing crazy happens <laughs> between now and july uh we are hoping to come to the west side in july but you guys are still just doing uh is it lawn services or i don't know what you're calling it but so i don't know what it would look like to see people but so we're currently doing this driving service that's what it's called <laughs> um, but we're working towards being able to do church on the lawn and see people coming down the cars and stuff. So uh, hopefully once the weather, once it decides it's not going to rain on a Sunday morning, we'll, we'll be able to have people out of the cars. 
Okay, because as of right now, we're hoping to come over end of July, and I can shoot you, I mean, we don't have totally set dates yet, but at least one overlapping of one Sunday, so we can see you guys, um, but yeah, we'd love to see people when we're over there, if, if it happens. <laughs> yeah, we'd love it. Do you guys have any prayer requests for the church or the staff, or... Putting you on the spot. <laughs> uh, it, you know, it's continued direction from the Lord. Like, same thing you guys are asking. Same thing, you know. Um, God giving us direction and wisdom as we seek to honor Him and be faithful in an environment that none of us know what's going on. Yeah. And so. Are you guys still doing like branch groups and stuff, or has a lot of that stuff been put on pause? Uh, branch groups transitioned to, uh, we were using Microsoft Teams. Mm. Oh. And so um, those are ending this week. Uh, women's Bible study was, doing, was using Zoom, and they ended a couple weeks ago. Um, men's discipleship is using Zoom. So some stuff is continuing on, and uh, we're kind of at that summer break point. Mm -hmm. So most of this stuff is taking a break, and we'll see. Who knows if people are going to actually be able to vacation or go. So, yeah. uh, we don't know what, what it looks like. Well, we'll be praying for those things for sure. Thank you. This is fun. Right. Yeah. I guess do this every well, I guess you don't do a live thing every Tuesday, but... No, I have, I have not. So. Yeah, thanks for thanks for thinking of us and yeah. inviting us to do this. We love yeah. the, love connecting and getting to share. Yeah, what's going on and what the Lord's up to. I, and I, you know, I'd love to do it again in the future, hopefully without microphone issues on my end. So, are you still getting an echo? Mm -hmm. Is everyone else hearing an echo besides us? I think so. Um, Allison at one Allison Bellick at one point said that. Uh, she can barely hear me. She can barely understand me. Um, but they can hear you fine, which that's the point of this. So, uh, so we're good. That is so odd. Because, yeah, we don't. It sounds great to us. Yeah, sounds perfect. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, thank you, guys. And, obviously, yeah. if anyone that's watching has personal prayer requests that they'd want us praying for, please send us a message or something. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye.